My name is Robert Lee with Testo and today we're going to show you how to use the Testo 550 to charge an air conditioning system using superheat and subcooling. The Testo 550-2 comes with a hard case. Inside the case we have the digital manifold itself, two pipe clamp probes for temperature, and enough room for hoses. You can keep the hoses connected to the digital manifold for transport and storage. When you get to the outdoor unit, before you turn the digital manifold on, there's a few things that you need to remember. One, ensure that the temperature probes are plugged in. Two, ensure that the valves are open so that when you turn the unit on, there's no pressure in the block. Also, hit P equals zero to zero out the pressure transducers. The next thing is to ensure that you're using the correct refrigerant. In this case, we're using R410A, so we're already set. But if you need to change it, it's simple enough to hit the R button and go through the refrigerant menu and choose the refrigerant that you need. So we're at the outdoor unit and we have the Testo 550-2, got the hoses hooked up to the unit. We need to verify that the outdoor coil is clean, that the indoor coil is clean, that we have a fresh filter, and that the airflow is correct for the system we're working on. Uh, very important to charge the, the system with correct airflow because we want to charge it to the correct specs, not to an incorrect airflow. Uh, the other thing we need to do while we're verifying airflow at the indoor unit is to make sure uh, what type of metering device we're using. So in this case, we're using a fixed orifice, a piston system, instead of a TXV. So using a fixed orifice system, we charge by superheat, and we look at the chart here, we get our outdoor temperature and our indoor wet bulb, and we look it up. So here we are on the chart, our superheat is gonna be around nine degrees. So the last thing we need to do is hook up the pipe clamps, the temperature probes on the 550-2. So the Blue handle, the suction line, T1, goes on the suction line. That's where our superheat comes from. And the red handle, T2, goes on the liquid line. That's where our subcooling comes from. Okay, so we have everything hooked up and we're ready to diagnose the refrigerant circuit. Um, we've, we've hooked up our charging hose to our uh, R410A drum. And as we can see here, we are a little bit low on charge. I'm gonna walk you through the screens and, and show you what we're talking about. So. On the bottom of the screen always is your pressure. So you're gonna have suction pressure and liquid pressure on the bottom at all times. Right above it at the home screen is your saturation temperatures. Uh, toggle down one, these are T1, T2s. This is your actual suction line temperature and your actual liquid line temperature. Toggle again, we have superheat and subcooling. Superheat is calculated from the saturation temperature and, the, and T1 and subcooling is calculated from the saturation temperature and T2. Again, the last screen is delta T, so you can check temperature drops across liquid line filters and things like that. So going back to superheat and subcooling, uh, at the operating conditions that we're at now, this unit should be running about nine degrees superheat and about 132 PSI on the suction side. So as you can see, we're just a little bit low on refrigerant. Okay, so we determined that we need to add some refrigerant. Our superheat's a little high, our suction pressure's a little low. And so what we're gonna do now is add just a little bit of refrigerant charge to the system. We got the hose connected to the tank, and because it's R410A, we're gonna charge it as a saturated uh, liquid. So the tank is upside down, and we meter it through our suction line, our suction valve, and we're just gonna add about six or eight ounces and see if that makes a big enough difference for our system. But it's very important to wait between uh, adding refrigerant. So this manufacturer recommends seven to 10 minutes. Um, and it's especially important with R410A because it's very easy to overcharge a system by adding refrigerant too soon before the system stabilized. And we don't want to overcharge it and then have to reclaim refrigerant. We just want to charge it and get on down the road. So we've added about a half a pound of refrigerant to the system. Remember our target superheat was nine degrees and that's plus or minus three degrees. We're at 10.3 now. So we're pretty close to exactly bang on where we need to be, according to the manufacturer's specs. So running through the other screens we'll, real quick, we can see that where our evaporator temperature is 39.6, and these are desi designed to operate at 40 degrees, so that's almost bang on perfect too. Here's our T1 and T2 numbers, and really that's it. To recap everything that we've done today real quick, it, it's important the first thing you do, it's important to verify that the outdoor coil is clean, that the evaporator coil is clean, that the airflow is correct for the system that you're working on. Uh, when you turn on the Testo 550, make sure that the probes are plugged in, that the valves are open. Um, hit that P equals zero to zero out the pressure transducers. Use the backlight if it's hard to see, uh, if you're a dark environment. Um, make sure you have the right refrigerant. 
toggle through the refrigerant screens. Make sure you get your set on the right one. The other important thing is check the air handler and make sure you know exactly which metering device you're working with, whether it's a TXV or a fixed or orifice. Different charging characteristics, characteristics for different metering devices. Um, that's about it, really. Make sure, wipe everything off, put it back in the case, maintain that professional image for a long time.